In this episode, we're talking all about time. So to begin with, I'm going to show you how to handle different frame rates inside of Adobe Premiere. Then I'm going to show you how to import a time lapse. And then finally, I'm going to show you how to do a basic speed ramp inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. So let's get into it. So to begin with, let's talk about handling different frame rates inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. Now your frame rate or your FPS, frames per second, is basically referring to the amount of frames per second of video. So real time is typically 25 still images for one second of video, and then slow motion is going to be higher. The higher your frame rate, the slower you can slow your clips down. But let me show you how to edit that footage inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. So I'm just going to begin by importing some footage. So I'm gonna to go to the media browser. We'll go to our hard drive of choice. We'll go into footage and we're just going to import our footage. And we'll just drag this onto our timeline. Now, if we play this footage back, you'll notice that the footage is already in slow motion. And that's because different cameras handle slow motion footage differently to one another. Some cameras shoot in a high frame rate, but it plays back in real time. And when you import that, it does play back in real time as well. But higher, more professional cameras like a RED or the Sony FS7, for example, will shoot in slow motion and play it back in slow motion. And then when you import that, it will play back in slow motion. So this is our slow motion footage imported into Adobe Premiere Pro. Now, if you wanted to speed that slow motion footage back up to real time, so let's say you were shooting in slow motion, but you didn't actually want it in slow motion, then all you would have to do is just right click on the clip. We'll go to speed slash duration, and we're just going to increase the speed using this percentage. Now let's just do a little bit of math to calculate the correct number. So I was filming in 50 frames per second, now real time is 25 frames per second and 50 is double 25. So that means if we want to speed this footage back up to real time, then we need to double it. So we'll take the speed that is 100 and we'll speed it up to 200% and press OK. You'll notice the clip has shrunk in half and that is because we've sped that up and therefore decreasing the size of the clip. And now when we play this back, that's playing back in real time. But what happens if you want to slow this clip down even further? Well, unfortunately, because this specific clip was filmed at 50 frames per second, if we slow it down any further than what it currently is set to, then it's going to start to look a little bit choppy. See, real time should be around 25 frames per second. You can pull it down to 23.976, or you can have it at 30, but if you pull it lower than these numbers, then it's going to start to look weird. I'll show you what I mean. So this is our clip, and this is currently the slowest that this can look and look acceptable. So we'll right click, We'll go speed slash duration, and let's pull this down to 50%. So the clip is already in slow motion at 100%. It's playing back in half time. If we slow this down to 50%, so we're slowing down the slow motion clip, this is how this footage is going to look. As you can see, if we play this back, this footage is starting to look a little bit choppy and really unprofessional. If we slow this down even further, so let's go 25%, we'll go to that same part of the clip. Let's play this back. You can really see the individual frames now slowed down and it just looks really, really bad. So to avoid that problem in the future, if you want really slow footage, then you have to shoot in a higher frame rate when you're filming your footage. The higher the frame rate, the slower you can pull it down in the edit. Now moving on, let's talk all about speed ramping. Speed ramping is a really stylistic editing technique and you'll often find this in music videos, montages or any other sort of playful edit. They're really awesome because they can help to add character to your film and it can really help to speed up the pace of your edit. But the question is, what actually is a speed ramp and what does a speed ramp look like? Well, a speed ramp is basically just speeding the clip up in specific areas and then slowing it down in other areas. So we've got this clip here. We've got the same clip as before. And with this speed ramp effect, we want to go in in real time. So she goes in, picks them up. And as she picks them up, it goes back into slow motion. And then once it's held for slow motion for a second, we're going to go back into real time. So in order to do that, we first need to find our points. So we want to start slow motion here. So we're going to go to the razor tool and the keyboard shortcut is C. We'll make a cut there and then we'll play that. And then we can go into normal speed just before that. So somewhere around here. Now we're going to go to that first section. We'll right click, go to speed slash duration and we'll speed this up to 200%. And then we'll just close that gap there. So normal time into slow motion and then back into normal time here. So we'll grab this third clip, we'll right click, speed slash duration and 200%. Now let's play that back. 
So she goes in, picks it up, slow motion here, and then speed ramps away. Now, if you really want to take this to the next level, then you can do a higher percentage, so you can speed this up even more. So as she pulls away here, so somewhere around here, you can have a really quick speed ramp. So we'll make a cut here. We'll go right click speed slash duration and we'll increase this to 600% and then we'll close this gap down. So let's see that back. Picks it up. We go into slow motion and then quick speed ramp and then into normal time like so. I think that looks great. Now, like I said before, speed ramps are really useful for music videos and they're really awesome for montages when you want to add a little bit of character into your edit. So playing with the time and adding some speed ramping is a really quick and easy way of adding that character. Moving on though, let's talk about time lapses and how you can import time lapses into Adobe Premiere. So essentially a time lapse is a video that is made up of stills. So a time lapse kind of works the same as normal video where it's made up with still images, but rather than shooting 25 frames within one second, you're shooting those over a staggered amount of time. So you take one picture, you wait four, five, six, seven, eight seconds in between, and then you take the next picture and you keep repeating this process until you've got all the frames that you need. Now, if we're following the 25 frames per second or the 30 frames per second rule, then you're going to want to make sure that you get 25 or 30 still images for just one second of video. That means if you're shooting a time-lapse that you want to run for four seconds, it's going to have to be four times 25 or four times 30. So that is 100 or 120. So if you're leaving a gap of anywhere between four to 10 seconds between each still image, it's going to take you anywhere between 20 minutes and 40 minutes to shoot one time-lapse. But once you've got all of your stills with your time-lapse, let's get that into Premiere and let's begin editing. So let's go into the finder and have a look at the still images. So as you can see, I've got all of my still images in here. So as you can see, this is one clip. This is one of the stills. We'll move on. This is another one of the stills. And you can see the camera's locked off. The stills look great, but we're going to have the clouds moving. And then we're also going to have the water moving as well in this time lapse. So that's going to look great. But how do we import that into Premiere? If we drag all of these still images into Premiere like so, then unfortunately they're just going to import as a bunch of different still images. And that's not how we want to do this. So instead, we're going to go into our project tab on the left. We'll right click or double click and go import. Then from there, you just want to navigate to your time-lapse folder. So you can see I'm here. Then you just want to make sure you go to that first image on the sequence. So make sure these are organized correctly. So let's say they're organized by a date modified or size. Then you want to make sure that you're going into name. Or you could also do time captured if you can do that. But you basically want to start with the first image at the top and the last image at the bottom. So you press that first image, you go into options and make sure image sequence is selected. Then you just want to press import and then Premiere Pro will import that as a video clip. So we'll drag that into our timeline. And as you can see, we've got a scaled in version of our time lapse. And that is because we were shooting still images of 5,000 by 3,000 pixels roughly. And this is a 1080p composition. So first things first, we need to scale this down. So we'll go to effect controls, motion, scale, and we'll pull the scale down until it fits. So somewhere around here. Now we'll just play this video clip back from the very beginning. And as you can see, I had a few random frames at the beginning where I was adjusting the time lapse. So I'm just going to delete that first part of the time lapse. And we'll play this back. And there you go. That looks a lot better. That is a really awesome looking time lapse. Now, because we scaled this footage down, because this is actually 37, we can actually increase this all the way up to 100% before we start losing quality. So that means we can add some animation and we can add some digital zooms onto our time lapse. So let's go to the very beginning and we're going to use our keyframe animation for this. So we talked about this in a previous episode. We're going to create a brand new keyframe on position and scale. We'll go towards the end, but not to the very end, because if we go to the end, the screen turns black. So we'll go towards the end roughly and we're going to pick a subject that we're going to zoom into. So I'm going to zoom in on this bridge here. So we'll increase the scale all the way up to around 100. So we'll go 95 and then we'll move the position down. There you go, like so. And then I'll just move these two keyframes now to the very end. So that should be sitting at the very end. 
Now, when we play this back, you'll see we've got this really awesome digital zoom in on that bridge. Of course, though, if that zoom in is a little bit too much, then go in between these two keyframes roughly. So we'll go somewhere here in the middle. We'll create a new keyframe on position and scale. We'll delete those last keyframes and then we'll move those middle ones over to the end. And when we play this back, that's going to move in a lot slower and it's not going to move in as much. So that looks great. And that is how you import your time lapses into Adobe Premiere Pro. And there you go. That is the time episode now complete. In this video, I showed you how to handle different frame rates. I showed you how to do a speed ramp. And we talked briefly about time lapses and importing time lapses into Premiere. In the next episode, we're talking all about multicam editing. See you there.